Since its launch last year on October the 25th, e Naira has tried to live up to its slogan of Same Naira, More Possibilities. 33 banks are fully integrated and live on the platform, 3 billion Naira successfully minted, about 1 million customers onboarded, more than 3,000 merchants registered across the country. Over 700,000 transactions amounting to 8 billion Naira recorded on the platform, with more than 2.5 million daily visits to the e Naira website. As often remarked by the CBN governor, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, Nigeria's digital currency, the e Naira, is a journey, and the team continues to work fastidiously to bring enhanced features and improved user experience to e Naira. Discussions held on the 25th October at a hotel in Lagos to mark e Naira's one year anniversary were part of the engagements meant to enlarge collaboration to further drive e Naira adoption. Here's the excerpt. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased today to have a panel of both public and private sector to talk together about what are the solutions and the use cases we can build, how do we use the eNaira as a tool to augment existing payment systems, and then how do we also drive new use cases going forward, and also make the mantra of same Naira, many possibilities actually come to life. So I'm going to start with, uh, with Mohammed from the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation. Now, as a payment system, what challenges do you typically have in the payments ecosystem and what are the potential opportunities you find for the e Naira? Just as the CBN is trying to ensure that uh, we, rush, uh, we move from cash uh, policy to cashless policy, also the Treasury is working assiduously to move from uh, to move to paperless office. We defer from 2nd April 2012, the Treasury has acquired an IPMIS application which helps us online real-time web-based database to prepare our budget, execute our budget and generate a report. So uh, we have one common goal of ensuring that uh, uh, the aim of government toward reducing cost of governance by adopting technology becomes a reality. Importantly, the Treasury is in full support of whatever reform that ensures the Federal Republic of Nigeria attains e-governance aimed at ensuring accountability, transparency and poverty in management of statecraft. Thank you very much. Landy, let's come to you and listen from the private sector side and the utilities perspective and learn in terms of how are you managing payments today and what are the potential benefits you see for the e-Naira within that rural electrification space? We are tasked with essentially electrifying the unserved and underserved. And what does that involve? Mostly we've grown in the off-grid sector and it's not so much grid extension anymore, it's off-grid sector. And we're talking about the last mile. So the, the marrying the two, the two mandates, financial inclusion on the central bank side and us reaching the last mile in terms of economics and electricity access. Because let's face it, without electricity, not much of the metrics that we'd like to achieve as a nation will really be achieved achieved. So that's where we see the, the benefits of the e Naira. Most of our programs, we have off-grid solar programs, we have off-grid mini-grid programs. So it's either payment platforms to, for customers, for the end user to use on mini-grid meters or on solar home systems. So essentially I see the big possibilities of adopting okay. it there. So we've just had Ladipo on stage entertaining and you represent a new ecosystem that we're still trying to understand, very youthful, very lively and vibrant. So tell us, from your perspective at Chocolate City, how do you see the e Naira being used to bring the youth on board as well as being used as a payment system or different types of um, applications within the, with, within the entertainment industry? Thank you, Peter. Yeah, so I think e Naira could be the future for us. And just to give you like a back, background of how the music business has worked for like a while, you mint your CD, print it, go to Alaba, sell for averagely the biggest people, which was Two-Face at the time made 20 million naira for a CD, for a whole album. Like one of his biggest albums, the one that had African Queen, made like 20 million naira. 
but you're in this phase now, like a great time to be alive in Nigerian music. Last year, I have an artist which make about 1.2 billion streams. And to give you context, the word for 1.2 billion stream is a stream you times it by 0 0.04 cents on the dollar. So do the math. And that's one artist out of how many on the catalog we own. So the biggest problem has always been payment solution. So if you see now, people consume music from iTunes, YouTube, but the big problem with the dollar issue Forex, they couldn't, a lot of subscribers in Nigeria has been cut off from this platform. But I feel like Inera could be the gateway in how they could pay. So we understand the young population in Nigeria. Most of them are not on those platforms that we buy, buy music for, because there's no payment solution. So I honestly feel like there's a great touch point here where if I have a profile on Inera, I could just go and log in and sync my account. So which, if you ask an average Nigerian artist, all of them always have like a WISE account because it's a digital bank. You just log in, they give you a card, you use the card and make all those dollars, all those um, payments that have to do with dollar, dollar and co. But because they are American banks or UK bank or co. So I honestly feel like this could bridge the gap and offer that payment solution we've been looking for for a long time. Thank, thank you all very much. So we've heard from our users technically, right? And now I'm going to come to our providers. So from the banking perspective, sir, what do you think the banks and how do you think we can innovate around the solutions for the electrification, the solutions for the media industry and the youth? What the central bank has done is to help the industry that's with the development of CBDC globally and bringing it back to our own environment is to help us checkmate intruders coming in to set the pace for us. And I like the way our very amiable and articulate director of IT graphically showed the e Naira journey. I can connect with it because I'm a father of twins. You know, when you have twins, you have to be conscious that you balance whatever you do for them. So if we are talking about innovation, we have to first of all look at the existing regular Naira we have. What are the use cases? Those use cases, are they also available or visible for e-Naira? The way we have it now is good. This, I'll call this like the initial move to sensitize the market. In terms of innovation, the first thing we are looking at in the banking industry is more of exposing the e-Naira to our existing payment channels. In Zenith, we took a decision about two weeks ago for us to recalibrate our systems so that when you log on into, say, Zenith Mobile Banking, the option you get is, do you want to continue this transaction on e-Naira? You click the prompt. Or do you want to continue on regular account? You click it. So that that way, I will have e-Naira because the way we have it now is on a standalone. You know, uh, I think it was Intersuite that talked about the card. How many cards would I need to carry? How many POS standards do I need to have? So we're also thinking of recalibrating the POS so that when you bring your card, you want to do a transaction, one single card, the POS terminal will prompt you, like we have currently. The POS terminal will prompt you now, is it current account, is it savings account? The next thing you are going to see, coming from the industry, is that you are going to see e-Naira. So that if it's e-Naira, you continue automatically. That way you have Inaira available on QR code of banks, on mobile banking channels of bank, on internet banking channels of bank, and also on USSD channel. That way will give us scale. So Jay, from the payments association perspective, now you wear two hats. You lead a payments business, and you're also the chair of the payments association. What are the innovations we should be looking for? And how do we enhance and scale and build the access to the payment systems? And what is Alpo doing about it? Um, from a payment industry perspective, perhaps let me just speak Alpo, which is an organization that um, I lead as the chair, um, Association of Licensed Mobile Payments Operators. We completed a level two 
network integration to the um, to the Inaira platform. And actually, I have to admit that if you asked me this question in January, my answer would have been different because I think the way CBN governor phrases it is that there was phase one that was very focused on the banks, right? So everything had to go through the banks. Um, we had to purchase the Inaira from the banks, etc. But I have to say that the turnaround earlier this year has been magnificent. The Inaira technical team has engaged AMPO, um, led by our very able Dr. Peter of Vcash. Um, he led a committee at AMPO that we worked through with the Inaira technical team. And we now have all the APIs that we need, not only to onboard um, Inaira customers onto mobile money platforms, but they can also work within the MMO e environment that they're very familiar with to continue to operate. Um, I would say that is critical in that we need to meet people where they are, right? Um, people already know to use these, these platforms. They already have the customer relationship with, with some of us fintechs. And so they should be able to access their Inaira through the fintech platform as well. But I do want to highlight one use case that I think is extremely critical and will be game changing. And, and my brother from, um, from Chocolate City mentioned something around um, potential FX payments, right? Um, remittances, I think, is critical. I think the great excitement for mobile money operators is around the potential for eNaira to open up the remittances space, you know, further, whereby parties are able to receive, again, right now it's Naira, but is there, is there potential that they are receiving, you know, non-Naira payments, um, maybe ter terminated in Naira to the eNaira account? Um, we really, really bullish around the remittances scenario, the cross-border payment, both for person-to-person -person and for business-to-person or any combination of those letters. Um, and I, I think we're excited to see what the next steps in that direction will be. Thank you, Jay. And I don't want to come across as only selling the positive side. So, MD Zenit, I'm going to come back to you. What were some of the challenges that you went through? Because Jay has also told us about the excellence of the um, technical committee, but we know with technology, things always happen. So what were some of the challenges that you observed and how did you overcome those challenges? The first challenge was that of apathy towards the scheme. Why was there apathy? Because if you look at it from the onset, when you create the wallet, the money moves away from you. Typically, no bank wants to lose liquidity. But when the central bank came up and said, look, this is an innovation. We sat down, we said, it's not just an innovation, it's a revolution. We had to identify with it, so we came. So if you notice, we're one of the banks who receive our award. We could have been even be the star winner if we started early, if we're not busy looking at it, that's one. Then, the second part is talking about the whole thing holistically, looking at the entire program. I mean, first you see is awareness. Awareness is key. We have a huge problem selling it to people because like with any new technology, there's this apathy towards it. So what we've decided to do in our system is like CBN is doing, certain allowances we have now determined to pay them through in IRA. When we started mobile banking, it was the same thing. We did that and we realized that it started picking up. So when people get used to a particular technology, you can sell it easily. Then when we start moving into the wholesale, there is need for us to enhance the security architecture. People want to be sure that this uh, ecosystem is safe. So we will be advocating, yes, tokenization is key now, is part of it, but I think for us to be able to solve the problem, CBN need to regulate and make tokenization compulsory in the ecosystem. So that when we start looking at uh, government revenues, collections coming through there, which will largely be the corporates, once the corporates start paying in, uh, their collection through there, automatically other aspects of their business will follow through. So I would say the challenge of security is there, the awareness is there, and every one of us have to join hands in fact, my charge to everybody here is nobody should live here without enrolling on eNaira. Otherwise, your purpose of coming here is defeated. Now, the youth population are one of the key priority segments in our financial inclusion strategy. How do we sensitize them? How do we enable them? Because you've spoken about, oh, they would use it if they can use it for the paying for music and stuff. But what role can Chocolate City play in building that awareness and building the product base for those types of payments? I, th I think the, the market is there already. 
because an average youth have like an iPhone, a smartphone. So the market is there. Just give you, for example, from December 1st to 31st, there's an event here every day, every day. So it's like coming to say, okay, I'm going to do for the early birds, purchase using inner, and you have like 10% discount. Then see the traffic you generate. So using that formula alone, it cuts the whole conversion rate. So people go direct, then the solution. And apart from that, that restaurants getting top deals, getting so I feel like the tribe is there, they are hungry. It's just communicating to them in the value they will understand. And then the conversion happens. Okay, so you're asking us to incentivize. Incentivize in the language they understand. Incentivize. So let's incentivize. So December is coming up and there's a whole lot of entertainment activities. That's a good way to start launching this incentive yeah. scheme. I could tell you for free, this this venue is booked from the first to the end. So it's like having those deals, having those comments. And this happens all around. Even like banks do at end of the year parties. They do. So it's like those people come in, giving them the ticket, say, okay, this is the platform. Even paying artists now charge arm and leg. I have a few of them. So it's like, okay, let me pay you via this platform. Like at the end of this value, value. I say, okay, if I'm paying you via this platform, you won't get back charges. This is better. At the end of the day, most, I think people from my generation, we don't care about seeing the cash physically. It's about it being available when I want to use. So if I'm, I know I could go, every, most people use pay with capture. You go your iPhone, you pay and move. You don't see cash. But it's like, how do I integrate this to those solutions and activate when I need, when need be? Okay, so on one side, we have a very digital native population, urban, access to digital devices. On the other side, we have a rural population, no digital infrastructure, no access devices, but we need to also create possibilities for each of those markets. Jay, we're talking about economic growth here, and one of Nigeria's biggest challenges is unemployment. Right, so from the perspective of the development space, and we've heard about the hackathon and all those things, in your output, what are you seeing and what can we do to drive and create jobs and create new opportunities for the youth? So, as far as employment and you know, job creation, etc., I think some of the things that, that have been mentioned already, especially around creating the enabling environment for you know, for all parties to participate in this e-Naira revolution, I think is critical, right? Um, I'll say that's the first point. The first point is around clearing the hurdles to innovation so that people feel incentivized to actually build solutions on top of this e-Naira and use it to push, to push activity. Um, and I think some of those moves are already being made. As CBN Governor said, it's an iterative process. I think a lot more, you know, opportunities will open up. The enhancement of the API API set will also drive a lot more of that activity. I think that's key. But the second thing that comes to mind for me, and I know, um, I mean, our, our deputy governors are here, um, so maybe we'll get, we'll get a flog later, but I'll make this point, is profit is not a dirty word, right? We are all in, in, this, in this business to make a little bit of money. We like financial inclusion, and we want to drive you know, economic growth as well. But I think great incentive will come if there's opportunity to also make money from this. So it's not that we're going to gouge customers or anything, but I think that has to be considered in the process, the, the commercial incentive for businesses and operators to build solutions on top of it. Okay, so let's now talk about what should these use cases look like? So we've talked about the rural, right? What should we expect? Because again, yes, Lande, you're representing rural electrification. But beyond electrification, how do we enhance their lifestyles? How do we use the e naira to create additional economic activity? And I want both of you, the MD of Zenith, to think about that as well as you, Lande. Thank you. Let's think of our country, a population of 200 million, depending on which statistics you use. Whether it's 200, is 180. The demography says about 70% below age 30. So exactly who are we talking to in e Naira? A huge part of the population. I hear concern about, yes, Jay is saying it's not a sin to make profit. But I agree. But let's bring them into the ecosystem. Let's reduce the cost of doing business, which is the beauty of e Naira, that settlement is T plus zero. No switching costs. Yes, the switching company is going to tell me I'm going to be disrupted. We will innovate and find some other 
um, you know, services, some verticals where you can fill in. For me, I may not make anything, but let's remember, anything about financial inclusion favors the bank. The more people we bring into the ecosystem, the, ecosystem, the bigger the banking space and deposit profile of bank become. And when somebody comes into, into the ecosystem and you are used to it, one day you ask me for a loan. One day you are going to ask me that you need BTA. One day you ask me you need to pay school fees. So we need to look at all of that and work on bringing in everybody. Bringing in everybody, the more the merrier. We may, if we start looking at it in macros, it will look like we are losing money. But in terms of the macro, is a win-win situation. Rural electrification rates in Nigeria are under 40%. So these are opportunities despite the challenges. In, in, in East Africa, they've gone way, way, way beyond in terms of mobile payments. In Peza, I mean, halfway up Mount Kilimanjaro, we had a solar grid, a solar home system installed there, and the lady was making her payments seamlessly, as in halfway up Mount Kilimanjaro. We haven't got there yet. So those are the, those are the um, obstacles that we, that we face and that we need to look at. So collaboration is key. As I said earlier, and energy access isn't just for us about just turning on a light switch. It's so much more. It's about the lifestyle benefits. It's about the health benefits. It's about the socioeconomic benefits to Nigeria. So as we know, the youth population is in the hundreds of millions, just over 100 million. A lot of them are in the, in the rural areas. How do we stop rural flight? So it's not about just building urban infrastructure. It's about giving them choices in the rural areas, which will actually reduce the rural flight and give young people in the rural areas something to live for and something to do. So those are, those are the things that we'd be looking for. Energy access is not just about turning on a light switch. Mm. It's about so much more. special day at the ongoing Lagos International Trade Fair held at the Tafar Balewa Square Thursday with the theme Connecting Businesses, Creating Value. Details in our next episode. Until then, report on resolved banking issues to the CBN Consumer Protection Department using the email cpd at cbn.gov.ng attach relevant documents. Call the CBN Contact Center on the phone line plus 234 700 Local courage may apply. For inquiries and comments, use the email address from the CBN at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter for updates and to watch uploaded episodes of the program. We invite you to join us again next time. I'm Uli Emisi Dada. Stay safe and bye for now.